great honor. It's a pleasure to be here once again. And it's an honor to talk to you people. And you give me the opportunity to share this, this few days with you. And uh, I may not have all answers. I have maybe none of them. But uh, I could relate to you my experience, our little knowledge, if there is any, about this pasture growing and finishing. And uh, having said that, uh, I was also wa was testing if you understand my English. Is it somewhat understandable? Okay, if you don't understand it, just raise your hand and I can try again, maybe in Spanish. <laughs> and then you will understand. Uh, some, some of you may translate better than I speak. Anyway, um, with these two days or two days and a half, what I, we, we, we thought that it would be best uh, for us to start uh, in the opposite way, um, or the, the reverse of most of the uh, common approaches uh, when we talk about pastures and cattle. Most of the time, we, the agronomists, start talking about the pastures, the forage, the grass, and then we talk about what we put on them to graze to harvest this forage, and that's why you are grass farmers. Uh, but I think now for this school and this, uh, of your interest in finishing, we have to do it the reverse. We need to talk a little bit about the animal first. And that has to do with this product that you are trying to market and, or sell or produce at least. And then all these products will have uh, different needs, different uh, requirements. And then we can think now with our resources how we can meet these requirements. Does it make any sense? Yeah. You know, if you put an animal in a feed yard, in a feed lot, you already know. You have a picture of what kind of animal you're targeting for, how fat, how, how heavy, or whatever. And then you feed that and adjust the diet to that animal. So let's, you know, for the sake of these two days, just do that. Instead of working from the pastures and how we can manage the pastures and all that, we, we, we will talk about that tomorrow. But let's, for a few hours, talk about these animal that we are thinking that we can produce or we would like to produce. Uh, and that's uh, sometimes the most uh, challenging part of it because many of us don't really know exactly what kind of animal we're looking for. Do you all know what you want? What is this grass-fed or pasture-finished steer that you're looking for? And uh, that's when we come to this number of uh, attributes that we would like to have, and you list your attributes, and you say, I want the animal to be grass-fed in an organic system, and I want it to be uh, part of the landscape. It has to be right, it has to look pretty, and it has to make me money, and, if I, and with the least amount of work. And, and that's a lot to ask. So uh, at home, I can't do a lot together. Uh, the, the, easy, the, the lazy part I do, I try to work the least amount of hours, um, and then I, and I let the animal to do the, the rest of the work. But uh, most of us talk about all the time about tenderness. I want it to be predictable. We want to sell tenderness to our consumers, to our people. Uh, and we say many times that this, the natural way to do it is going to create tenderness. And that's not exactly right. Nature didn't plan for tenderness. Maybe they were tender. Maybe the wild animals are tender. Maybe deer is tender. Sometimes they're not any tender at all. So tenderness is, uh, well, there you go. Come on. Doesn't want to let me lie. Uh, tenderness is something that we work for and we develop in the system as much as we can, because we think our, our consumers would like something that should be tender. Uh, leanness, but marble. What's that? You know, we need a little bit of marbling in that meat. People appreciate the flavor, the experience of uh, that that uh, marbling provides. The fat with a little bit of a uh, flavor in it. But most of this beef. It's going to be lean. It's very hard to produce a, or it's difficult to produce a 
fat steer or a steer uh, that would look like a, f in a, a steer that comes <coughs> from the feed yard from a feedlot off of grass. Grass has a limit energy-wise. It's not concentrate. It's not concentrated in energy. So we always uh, would be working towards more energy in the grass, increasing the rates of gain, increasing the, the, the rate of fat deposition. But most of us will not end up with an overfat steer. Sometimes we do, or a heifer, but not, it's not going to be always the case. So overfattening an animal may not be our risk. Cannibal. Yes. A lot of people are going through trying to find where you are in the book. Okay, but that's so, a. Let, let it, me tell you, just trust us that it's in the book. It's a grass. It, it's a. And the, just relax and, and enjoy. There the is a the, the after. It says uh, grass finished beef uh, by Animal Port Domingo. And the first question says, what, to what extent is fattening needed on grass fed? After, after a couple it's of articles. It's all in there, so just, just don't worry yes. about it. Yes, don't worry about it. It's there, and it's, it's written in a way that you will, under, you will understand what I said when you, write, when you read it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope. <laughs> anyway, we, wanna, we would like to be predictable. Uh, most of us would like that meat to have a desire, uh, a color uh, that would be appreciated by the consumer, some flavor and juiciness. And that's all related to this degree of finishing. Uh, I will show you later a, a few pieces of data with more, in more detail, but uh, there's always a discussion uh, between in, the, in, in our research uh, how uh, fat, or how, uh, what, what finishing means, and how fat these animals should be to call them finished. And is fatness or, or, or and marbling related to tenderness? And we will find out that until a certain extent, to a point, that, that finishing and that degree of uh, fatness, that fat level, it is, it is slightly associated to tenderness, but after 3.4%, 3 3.5%, 4% of fat, intramuscular fat, after that point, increasing fatness does not improve tenderness. Most likely, it's, it's, uh, tenderness is related to connective tissue, to struggle, to the harsh and easy times that an animal has through it's life more than anything. It's connective tissue, it's muscle work, more than degree of fat or fatness. I will show, we will talk about that. Um, you would also talk about these nutraceutical properties, these healthy attributes of meat. And we need to know that there is a, there is a boundary, there is a, there is a frame to it. We're not talking salmon here, we're not talking uh, fish, or we're not talking wild salmon, is beef, okay? So we don't have to get confused. Uh, there is a limit to it. But there, is some nice, there are some nice things about the properties of having more uh, antioxidants in this uh, meat. Uh, like uh, Alan said, the carotenes, vitamin E, they're associated to, to, to green growing grasses. So the more the animals are exposed to green growing grass, the greater the chances of having more carotenes and vitamins in the fat, the lipid soluble ones, the fat soluble ones. Uh, most likely the chances of having more minerals in that uh, meat will, <coughs> will, will be there. Uh, and all these nice things, the omega-3s, and we will talk about that. But again, we're talking about beef, not fish, okay? So, so the winner get over the board with those uh, nutritional aspects of, of beef. Uh, you may want to label your meat from, in the, uh, if many of you relate a story to it or link a story to your beef, then there is another attribute that we have to uh, work with. And all these are constraints to our program. So we want, like I said, if we want them all at once, the program becomes difficult. Uh, let's say they want to be organic, then we, we keep increasing our restrictions here. Producing organic beef is not simple because the forage 
and the forages that we're using, supplements, the store feed, all have to be produced in a, an organic way. So all these things are nice, but maybe not all of them could be uh, introduced at once. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, we just killed a beef that I think it's about a year, a little over a year old. And there is zilch larvae in it, and very little outside fat. So is, is that is that uh, steak there? Is that more than a, a year old or two years old? Or? It's about eighteen months old. Eighteen months old, and, and it will larva like that. Uh, yes. And even more than this. I, was actually, I have this steak here because it shows several things. There is marbling in here, but this is a little fat with lots of connective tissue. So this is not exactly fat, okay? The fatness, the marbling, is like a little dot, little spots in here, not this. Yes. Okay, 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 so let's not get confused with that. I have this steak here. It is, well, it is fairly marbled, but it has a very good uh, back fat um, thickness here. But there's little like light links here, you know? This, this, this is a little more connective tissue than, than fat. But in, the, in the USDA, they have, a, uh, they, uh, they have their ranges of fat. Uh, yes. This would be like low choice, okay. to high stand, low choice. Okay. So again, we're working towards, like I said, all these nice things to have. The more of them we want, low omega-6, omega-3 ratio, that's very, very consistent uh, attribute. Most of this grass-fed, pasture-finished beef will have a, high, a low omega-6, omega-3 ratio and Fairly high CLA depending on the forage base. Like I said, carotenes could be two or three times more than uh, your confinement fed steer. Uh, and for all, all of this are related to the diet and the forage that we're exposing the animals to. We call it the forage chain. A chain is a sequence of forages. Uh, many of you have, may have the opportunity of having one pasture, one forage year around, but not everybody. So in my part of the world, we have to sequence forages, link them like in the chain to make the animals grow through a stalker and then the finishing phase or fattening phase. Let's get to some of this data that I was talking about. <clears throat> I don't want to overload you with data, but uh, just, just, let's just look at the proportions here. Uh, this is 100% pasture. These animals were finished on pasture. They never had a, ex they, weren't, they weren't exposed to any grain or anything from, from weaning. Um, we look at the CLA, so this is 0.6 years, less than 1% in that uh, intermuscular fat. Uh, on milligrams of, of every 100 grams of muscle, that means 15.7. Uh, this is doubling what we have here on a grain-based or corn silage-based finishing phase. So that pretty much says what you know already from most of your readings that CLAs, that desirable fatty acid, uh, that by the way, it's an omega-6 fatty acid, it's not an omega-3. You gotta know that because we also we all like the omega-3s, but some of these omega-6s are not too bad. This is one of them. Anyway, uh, this is low here, and uh, like you know, it's doubled here. In some other re some other research uh, in the world have shown that you could triple that. But most of the time, that's where you end up. Uh, here we have uh, pastures, the same thing, pastures, finishing the animals on pastures, but they were supplemented with grain. And as long as this pasture was green and growing, see how forgiving it is. We dropped, adding the grain, we dropped, we changed the rumen environment a little bit. So the production of this CLA were, was not that efficient and, and uh, uh, the overall proportions dropped. We can see them here that dropped a little bit compared to, to these proportions in this intramuscular fat. Uh, but it's, actually higher than 
on, on uh, finishing these animals on this uh, silage or, or, or corn diet. Uh, there's another interesting thing here or figure that we're looking at proportions here on, a, on intramuscular fat. These numbers look the same, but if we know that this, this pasture finishing has a little more fat than these animals here, on an absolute basis, milligrams, they are, this was higher than these two. You see what I mean? A, a, a proportion in the fat may say something or may say nothing, depending on how much fat or intramuscular fat we have in that beef. Okay? Um, of course, these were low. And uh, this ratio, omega-6, omega-3, this is what most of us look at first because this is the most stable um, indicator. If we are below 4, if we are 3 to 1, we're talking of a desirable ratio. Most of the grass-fed or pasture-finished beef is in a ratio of 2 to 1 or lower. This one right here says 1 or 4. That's 1 to 1. The same amount of omega-3, the same amount of omega-3 as omega-6. That gives us a one-to-one. One. Are you with me on this? This is a 7.6 to 1. This is 6.5 to 1. And this uh, supplemented pasture gave us a two-to-one. So if we, had, if we had to discriminate grass from grain-fed beef, this is a very good chemical analysis that we could use. And I can show you research all over the world that is happening in Europe, here in the, in the States, down in South America, that come up with the same, always ends up with the same sort of ratio. The older the animals get, m more fat, we may see a, a slightly higher ratio closer to 3 to 1, but 2 to 1, that, but never 8 or 5 to 1 or above. Is that? Okay, what else is here? Uh, regarding the saturated fats, the numbers are pretty much similar, so what we're dealing here is the ratio among the unsaturated fats, the, the, the ones that we want. In some, some pieces of research show that maybe, not here, but in some other research, they found slightly less saturated fats in grass-fed or, or, or pasture-finished beef. Not in this piece of research that I'm showing here. This is a compiled uh, list of uh, trials that we did at home. Many, many people there did, actually, more than... Some, and some of us, some of, some of us were involved here. Um, look at the same thing here, omega-6, omega-3, and CLAs. These were feedlot finished or on, based on corn, 14 to 1. And this were uh, alfalfa pasture, 100%, 2 to 1. This was a supplemented one again, once again, 3.5, 4.5. So again, the pasture is very forgiving. It's very... But it has to be a green growing pasture. And I keep saying that because otherwise we won't see that response. Uh, In other words, hay and silage wouldn't produce that thing. Exactly. We may not get to 14 to 1 with hay or silage, but we could be 5. It won't help us to wash if effects that we don't want. Or if you don't not really into this, don't really... <coughs> Don't claim a high, low omega-6, omega-3 ratio. So that's why I started saying we need to know what we're targeting for, what we're trying to sell. We may not be able to sell everything at once. The high CLA story we have to be careful about because C C CLA is how they change a lot. And if we say high CLA, what is a high CLA? Is it more than 1%? Is it 0.6? Is it 0.8? And it changes. It varies between animals, among animals, and 